Hello, hello. I am just gonna let people jump in and we will get started in just a second. So you are here live, say hello in the chat. Let me just make sure. Um, if you make a comment, just put the little drop down blue menu to everybody so everybody can see your See your comments. Okay, so first of all, to, yesterday I messed up the time. I did the webinar at the wrong time, and uh, I was wondering why nobody was watching. So let's just go. And there's my dog in the background going crazy. Okay, so today we are talking about how to stop drinking when everyone around you drinks, which is always a, um, it feels very tough. Um, I got sober when I was 27 and um, it felt like everybody drank. This was back in the year 2000 and it felt like everyone drank and everyone my age drank and everybody who drank was having a wonderful time apart from me. And I know that that's what it can feel like. And if that's what it felt like, if it feels like that for you, I know that feels very lonely. So let me explain a few things. So um, the thing is about sobriety, if you decide to stop drinking, is people take it very, very personally. Because we tend to drink with other people who drink like us if we drink in a group. Our, our drink, drinking and excessive drinking and abusive drinking is very um, acceptable sociably in most groups. Um, so if we're all drinking together and we all drink the same way and then someone decides to stop drinking, it can be very upsetting for the group. The group gets very upset and they take it personally because if you are saying that you are stopping drinking because it's becoming problematic, well, then what does that say about my drinking? So people interpret what you do very, very personally. And I wrote about this in my book, and I'm just going to read you a tiny uh, little bit about it. It's uh, in Soberful, and it's on page 17. I'm going to need my glasses. So mirrors. We often surround ourselves with mirrors. We tend to consume alcohol with people who have a similar relationship to alcohol that we do. For many of us, it's our families, the friends we grew up with or went to college with, or the people we work with. There is an agreement, and it's kind of an, you know, an unspoken agreement among us that this is how we drink. It could be binge drinking on the weekends or happy hour after work. Group drinking reflects back to us that we are normal because we are all doing similar things. Drinking alcohol is expected of us. So going against the grain is going to have some pushback. So the first thing about getting sober when everyone else around you drinks, you really need to expect and understand that there will be pushback, that people will not accept, won't like it, and what will happen is when I say pushback, they'll want you to go back to drinking. They'll say, and, and again, I write, write about this in the book about the different people that you're going to meet, sudden overnight addiction experts. Overnight, they have an opinion on your drinking and what a problem is and what a problem isn't. Um, the drunk persuaders, the fun police, the goalpost movers, it's, it's, I'm not going to go too much into that, but it, it's all in the book there. And, and the reason um, that they push back against your drinking and say things like, you don't really have a problem. It's not really that bad. Um, oh, you just need to cut down a little bit. Just need to, and they have all this kind of like advice that they've just pulled out of their asses to give to you. The reason that they are trying to get you to drink again 
is because it makes them feel more comfortable. Does that make sense? It, it, they feel more comfortable if you stop, if you go back to just how things were, thank you very much. So they don't always have your best interests at heart. So we kind of want to minimize our contact with people in the early days who are pushing back and trying to get you to start drinking again, bringing up, you know, and, and sometimes they can be really persuasive, like these, these really like, well, you haven't had a drink for three weeks, you'll, you'll be fine now. Well, they just sound very reasonable. And also we look at them and we think, well, they're all right. They're, you know, why can't I be like them? So if, it's important to know that everybody who consumes alcohol has a cost. And I'm not just talking about money. Everybody who drinks pays a price for the drinking. So um, know that that's happening um, and know that they, are, they don't have your best interests at heart. They're doing this to make you that themselves feel more comfortable if everything just goes back to the way it was. So we have to minimize our contact with those people at the beginning because they don't get it. The only person who has to get this is you. The only person who has to understand uh, why you are stopping drinking is you don't expect people to understand because the other thing is we all have this preconceived idea of what an alcohol problem looks like and most people think an alcohol problem is someone who drinks round the clock probably homeless you know is getting DUIs every other week that's an alcohol problem and because most people who I work with don't look like that then we um we don't think that they have a problem. We don't, we just don't fit what we think is the image of, of what an alcohol problem is. So because people have this very, uh, all, all of my clients, by the way, look like you, all of my clients, when they come to me, they will say on, you know, if, if my friends knew I was joining a sobriety program, they'd be shocked on the outside. Everything looks more or less like it's okay. An alcohol problem shows up internally in how we feel about ourselves much earlier than it does externally, which is do you, did externally it is like DUI, it's falling over drunk, getting fired, all of that kind of stuff. An alcohol problem shows up inside way before it does outside. So people can't see it. They can't see how you feel. So they are all coming in with these preconceptions of what an alcohol problem is and what an alcohol problem isn't, because in their opinion, you don't fit that. Obviously, you can't have a problem, so you should drink and everything's fine. So you are going to upset the apple cart when you stop drinking. And we surround ourselves with mirrors, just like I read from the book. We surround ourselves with people who collude with our drinking. So we need to do the, the same thing in sobriety, except we need to surround ourselves by people who don't drink two key components that will make or break your sobriety are consistency and community you have we have to have community we have to have sober people it, it does feel like we're the only person who's not drinking otherwise now I want to say that that is often perception I felt like that when I stopped drinking at 27 years old in 2000 I thought I didn't I'd never met anyone who didn't drink until I met the first person who who got me sober I'd never met anyone. Over time, I began to see that actually I, I did get to know people who didn't drink alcohol or drank, drank very, very minimally and very, very rarely. And it was really interesting. And, and lots of people I met who didn't drink alcohol, they didn't not drink because they had a problem. They just didn't like it, just didn't care for it, didn't want, didn't, didn't want to. And it was kind of amazing to me that I discovered this that I discovered um, that actually the world is full of people for various reasons who don't drink. It wasn't my perception. So know that we perceive things to be a certain way. Ultimately, if people don't, around you don't understand, this is the question you have to ask yourself. Who, who am I living for? Am I living for myself and my own well-being and purpose? Or am I living for what I think other people may or may not think about me? Because that's kind of the truth of it, right? And I've seen people do this. I've seen people stop drinking and then start drinking again because they were frightened other people thought they were boring 
or their boyfriend didn't approve or their peer group were telling them they were no fun anymore. That breaks my heart because at the end of the day, I have to sleep in my head tonight and I have to behave and show up in the world in a way that means I can do that effectively. Otherwise, I'm trying to live to please you or what you think of me. And I don't even know what you think of me because I can't read your mind. So we have to ask ourselves, who do I want to live this life for? For myself or for what other people may approve of me or what they think of me? And that's a really quite a big, scary question. You know, I remember I had this client, she was, she's in Puerto Rico and um, she came to me and she has two children and, and she was just desperate and hated drink, you know, constantly hung over, constantly not meeting her goals, her obligations. And uh, she started working with me, it's about three, over three years ago now, I think. Um, and she said to me, you don't, you don't understand, Every, where I live in Puerto Rico, she lived a wealthy part. Um, she said, everybody drinks everybody drinks everyone that's what we do at the weekend we go to the country club the children playing tennis and swimming and we're sitting by the pool and we're having cocktail everybody drinks I don't know anybody who doesn't drink anyway she persisted she persisted in sobriety and what happened to her is what commonly happens to some of my clients she after about six months people began to notice she was different like they'd look at you look great by the way your skin like what have you done you look really good she said I just stopped drinking and people like were amazed. Anyway, not only has she met new friends who don't drink, three of her drinking friends have stopped because they have seen the impact it's had on her life. Not just how she looks, her energy, how she feels about herself. It was very, very clear. So even though we're telling ourselves the story that everybody drinks around us, that is often a perception rather than reality. Yes, we've probably surrounded ourselves by drinkers, but if we step out of that group, we will find more and more people who don't drink or hardly drink at all. And we wanna find those people. Um, it's important when you stop drinking to not try and persuade other people to stop. You can't persuade anyone else to stop drinking and you can't get anyone else sober but yourself. The best way to help someone, maybe you have a partner or a relationship with somebody who has an alcohol problem, the best way to help them is to go about the business of being sober and being sober yourself. Because people, it's not what you say, people will notice a difference in you. So how to stop drinking when everyone around you drinks is you have to find a community. It's the most important thing, whether it's online, whether it's in person, and, and now that we've kind of pretty much fully opened up in the world, um, we, you know, uh, there's lots of options to do that. So you need to find sober people. It makes all the difference because for a while you're going to perceive that you are the only sober person and that's going to just feel really uncomfortable. And uh, it's just easier when you have people who understand. Um, for those of you who are ready to join a sober community, I've put the link in to join Sober for Life, which is my sober community. We have a global community of people who are getting sober, um, who are living a sober life, people all over the world. We have lots of workshops and support and uh, loads of great, really fun things. It's a very engaged community and it's $16 a month. I know that you spent $16 on alcohol. And if you have spent $16 on alcohol, why not invest something in your sobriety rather than your destruction? Um, I put the link and I'll put the link in the comments for those of you who want to join that. So having a community is really key. And then having a program. The reason that we drink, um, there's, a, there's a great expression about uh, the progress of alcohol. First of all, it's magic. Then it's medicine. And then it's misery. And it's actually a problem when it's magic. And the reason for that is, and that's how it felt for me, it felt like magic when I was drinking it. It made me feel comfortable in my own skin and sexy and popular and all those kind of things, all those kind of things. And that's because I, before I even started alcohol, I didn't feel comfortable in my skin. I didn't really like myself very much. So alcohol kind of filled that when I was 14, 15 years old. So it was magic. And then it became medicine when my anxiety and panic attacks took off when I was 18. 
and then it became misery until I stopped. So that process of drinking, the reason that you're showing up in front of me, I know that you don't have a normal relationship with alcohol because people who, who don't have a problem, they don't seek people like me out. And I want you to know that it's completely possible to overcome an alcohol problem and be sober. And I know it may feel impossible. It might feel in your situation that you don't have a supportive partner or family or everyone around you drinks. I've seen lots of people in those situations get sober, but you cannot do it on your own. Don't try and do it on your own. Why would you make it harder and more painful? Um, so I'm gonna wrap it up for today. I know loads of you are jumping into Sober for Life already and seeing the community and all of that kind of stuff. I will be back tomorrow at the correct time. So I hope that you will join me then for the final little webinar, but I hope that this has given you some support and fuel and food for getting sober and changing your life. Thanks so much.